I'd like to invite uh, Mr. Uh, Dr. Huang uh, to introduce his member because it will be very useful for us if we giving him opportunity to in introduce his member of team. You have the floor. Thank you, Your Excellency. First of all, congratulations for your election as a chair of the Legal Commission. I'm sure under your able directorship, we will successfully complete our agenda. Second thing, I would like to apologize to you. I have a few small surprises to you. I'm guilty of having a legal commission in such a small room, by coincidence. <laughs> but it's good. And secondly, since we have the interpreters, I would want to benefit to practice my mother tongue, which is Chinese. My name is Wang Jiefang. I am the director of the Legal Affairs and External Relations Bureau of IKO. I will serve as the secretary of this commission. Next, I would like to introduce the member of my team. Is Mr. Benoit Verhagen. He is Senior Legal and External Relations Officer, and he will be Deputy Secretary of this commission. However, as he has another function as a secretary of the Credential Committee, even though small, but they meet quite often until almost the last minute of the assembly. So he will be busy for some other items. On my left is Mr. Ari Jacob, senior legal officer, who will also be the deputy secretary of the legal commission. Ari will be the focal point regarding the work of the Legal Commission. So if you have anything, you can contact him or me, of course. Uh, I have another function as a Secretary of the Executive Committee, so sometime I wouldn't be here. Then on the right of Monsieur Verhagen is uh, Mr. Christopher Petrus, Legal Officer. On my far left hand, Mr. Andrew Opolo, Legal Officer, and we have Mr. John Thatcher on my right far end. John, please stand up. Legal officer. We also have other teams. Let me introduce you one by one. Mr. Fang Ruifeng, please stand up. Just seconded from China. He just arrived two days ago. Mrs. Mala Weinstein, legal officer. Ms. Diana Brooks, Acting Legal Officer. Ms. Yao Myung Pong, Mr. Yao Myung Pong. He is Legal Officer, but now he is acting for the Ethics Officer, so he is temporarily absent from the Legal Bureau. The next one is uh, Mr. James Lau, surrounded by Singapore. On my left hand, lower podium, Mr. Espinola, who used to be Deputy Director of Legal Bureau. He has retired, but he come to help us. And we also have Matthew Wagua, Acting Officer, as a Treaty Assistant. The rest is our teams as so Administrative and also Lydia, my closest assistant, Administratively, Lydia Norfolk. And the rest are interns. I don't introduce them. You can meet with them later. So it looks like a big team, but if you take away the second D from Canada, China, Singapore, and the retiree that help us, we don't have that big a team. So thanks for the states for supporting us. That concludes my introduction, and we look forward to serving you to the best of our abilities and wish you 
a successful session. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So much, Mr. Hang. Um, I think, uh, thank you for introducing uh, the, the member of your teams, and I believe it is not only big in, in terms of size, but also, uh, but we do believe that it is also big in terms of capacity to serve us and to help us in discharging our uh, responsibility. Thank you so much uh, for the introduction. Um, if you allow me, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we, we, we will now turn to the next agenda item on, on the election of the first and the second vice chair chairperson who will work together with me in conducting this commission. Um, I understand that, as usual, we are going to have a nomination. Therefore, I wish to invite the floor to present the nomination of the vice chairperson, the first and the second chairpersons. The floor is open. Yes, I recognize uh, Singapore. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chairman. First, allow me to join our director, uh, Dr. Huang Jiefang, in congratulating you on your election to the vice, uh, to the chair of this uh, legal commission. Um, we have every confidence that uh, the work will proceed very well under your leadership, and be assured of all our support and cooperation. Um, for the first uh, vice chair position, I would like to nominate Mr. Jeffrey Klang of the United States. Mr. Jeffrey Klang is the Assistant Chief Counsel, International Affairs and Legal Policy of the Federal Aviation Administration. He provides the FAA Administrator and the Senior Executive Staff with legal advice on all international aviation matters. Prior to this appointment, he has also served uh, in various positions in the FAA as regional counsel in the FAA's second largest region in Europe. Uh, he has also been the assistant, um, sorry, he has regional counsel in the, uh, FAA's second largest region in the US and as assistant chief counsel in the Europe, Africa and Middle East office of the FAA based in uh, Brussels, Belgium. Um, Jeffrey Klang, Jeff Klang, as we fondly know him, uh, has been long time serving in ICAO uh, as the US representative. I think he's well known to all those who have been involved in ICAO work in, uh, for the longest time. Let me just say a number of things about his contributions. Uh, he is currently a member of the um, Cross-Border Transferability Task Force and continues to serve as the US representative to the Cape Town Commission of Experts, in short, known as CISER. He has served six years as chairman of that uh, commission. Prior to that, he was the US representative to the uh, Cape Town Diplomatic Conference and all the prior work. And soon after the diplomatic conference, he served as the chair, chairman of the draft regulations working group uh, established by the Cape Town Convention's Preparatory Commission for the International Registry. He also served as co-chairman on ICAO's Article 83 BIS workshop and as the US representative to ICAO's Global Navigation Satellite Systems Legal and Technical Panel. There's a lot more that I can say about Jeff Klang, but I, time does not permit. And I'll just say that one of the significant um, characteristics of Jeff is that he's approachable, he's solution-oriented, and I'm confident that he will be a great first vice chair to this um, legal commission and a great support for your work. For the second vice chair position, I would like to nominate Mr. Mohammed Mansour Ali El Rukeshi of Oman. He is currently Director of Legal Affairs at the Public Authority for Civil Aviation of Oman and responsible for all aviation legal matters and provides legal assistance to the CEO and Board of Directors of his organization. He takes care of all international treaties that Oman is involved in. 
He has been and continues to be a member of many international and national community committees dealing with aviation matters, such as ARPAS, conflicts of interest, fair competition, enforcement of aviation law panel. He has a master's degree in international law, and in 2016, he was seconded to White, case, White and Case, a legal firm for six months, and he has attended many international air law courses. Um, I must not uh, miss informing that he was seconded to the Legal Affairs and uh, External Relations Bureau. And so you can see that he has um, experience that will also serve this legal commission and will be a great support for your work as well. So I commend uh, the two of them and uh, propose that Mr. Jeff Klang and Mr. Mohamed Manso L. Ali El Rukeshi for the first and second vice chair positions of this legal commission. For everyone's consideration, please. Thank you. Thank you, Singapore. Now I would like to invite any other comment or feedback on the nomination. Yes, uh, Vinland, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I would like to join Singapore both first in, in congratulating you for your nomination as chair of this commission. And I want to assure our commitment to the efficiency and to the, the results of uh, this group. We are in good hands. Second, I would like to warmly support the nom nominations by, by Mrs. Tansu Hei, uh, uh, nominations of Mr. Jeffrey Klang, and Mr. Mohamed Mansour Ali al Rukaishi as, as uh, vice chairs of this commission. I will, for the sake of efficiency, I will not uh, repeat the kind words of uh, Sue Hay. Uh, I totally agree with her, her, her and I, um, I just wish to say, say that in, in these hands we will uh, certainly be able to carry on our work in the best of manner. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Finland. Now, in our table, we have uh, two nominations um, as proposed by, yes, uh, Gambia, you have the floor. Um, thank you very much, Mr. Chair. I also want to join um, Singapore and Finland to congratulate you on your nomination, on your election. I also want to save time and um, um, agree with um, Singapore and Finland to the nomination of Jeff and Mohammed as first and second vice chairs, respectively. Thank you. Thank you, Gambia. Is there any still comment or feedback? I see none. Now, in our table, we have a nomination for vice chair. Vice Chairpersons. First is uh, Mr. Jeffrey Klang from the United States, and uh, Mr. Mansur Ali Al Rukaizi from Oman. Uh, it has been proposed by Singapore and it has been endorsed by Finland and Gambia. If there is no comment, I wish to say that we have an agreement to appoint them uh, to, to, be, uh, to be the Vice Chairperson. So I think we, we, we have an agreement on that. And I should also congratulate uh, Mr. Jeffrey Klein and Mohammed Mansur Ali Al Rukaizi for the appointment. And it is my hope that we can work together in conducting this meeting in the most efficient way. Congratulations. <laughs> Distinguished guest. Sorry, distinguished delegation. Um, Let me go to directly. Directly to this one, yeah. Yes. Okay, okay. Now we go to the item four and five of the order of the business. Uh, general on consideration of general working arrangement as appear in working paper 10 and review agenda as appears in document or working papers number one. 
as uh, you know that there are, are routine items and that require at this, at this stage no particular action. We just take note it. I think we just take note it. And uh, let's go now to uh, agenda item 37. Um, you know that under item, item 6, the under the order of business, we will concern of agenda item 37 on annual reports of the Council Assembly for 2016 and 2017 and 2018. Under this agenda item, the Commission is invited to take note the relevant chapters of the annual reports of the Council. The report is also accompanied by the supplement for the first half of the year 2019, which has been revered to you by the plenary. And uh, the annual reports are available now at the IQ website. It is also my understanding that no specific action taken by the Commission under, the, under this agenda item other than noting them, and they will be so reflected in the report. Now we, we can continue to agenda item 38, the next order, order of business. It is uh, actually the core of our deliberation. Agenda item 38 is about a work program of the organization in the legal field. Under this agenda item, the report on the progress of the work in relation to the work of the legal committee and its future work. Our deliberation will set the course of the works that need to be carried out to advance international law and to promote the rule of law. The Commission is expected to consider three working papers and two information papers. The main working group paper is the paper presented by IQ Secretariat is working paper 78, which provides you with an overview regarding the status of items of the general work programs of the legal committee. We should also have a deliberation on the possible prioritization of items. And then we shall thereafter consider working paper 101 on article 12, the Chicago Convention, communication mechanism and guideline to support its implementation as prepared by Brazil and the United States. Following the presentation by, uh, on, on, on that paper, we, we, we are going to consider document or working paper 293 on the progress with regard to the promotion of the convention for the unification of certain rules for international carriage by air or Montreal Convention 1999 as presented by IATA. After the presentation of the three working papers, I will open the floor for discussion. And I, I hope that the discussion won't be so long because our time is so limited. And once our deliberations are concluded, we will consider the two papers submitted by Korea on proposal for a legal seminar in the Asia Pacific as appear in working paper three, Seven, five, and by Indonesia on harmonization of the air, air carrier liability. As you know that we don't have adequate time to have a discussion on these two information papers, I suggest we just, uh, the commission just take note it. The, I hope uh, this, uh, uh, this approach will be acceptable to you. And Please be informed that the working papers 101, 293, and 545 were initially supposed to be considered under agenda item 40. However, given the nature of those papers are thematically related to our discussion on work program, it is suggested that those working papers be considered under this agenda item. I trust that we can proceed in this fashion. And uh, before that, now, yeah, I see uh, the US delegation. You have the floor. 
Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I would be remiss if I did not uh, take the floor to thank Singapore, my good friend, uh, the chair of the legal committee, Suhei Tan, and also Finland and Gambia for seconding and thirding the nomination of myself. I um, congratulate you as well as the chair, and I want you to know, and I'm sure my uh, good friend Muhammad Ali al-Rakeshi from Oman agrees that both he and I will work together with you in any capacity as needed. And uh, I just want to thank this uh, commission for their confidence in both me and, and Muhammad. Thank you. Thank you, Jeffrey Klang, for your kind words. If, uh, if you allow me, I wish to proceed uh, uh, to the next agenda item. But before that, uh, I really want to give the floor to Mr. Jacob from the Legal Affairs and External Relations Bureau to present uh, the working paper 78. And Mr. Jacob, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Good afternoon. Um, working paper 78 provides information on the ongoing work of the Secretariat in the legal field and legal matters before the Council. The Commission is presented with an overview regarding developments and relevant decisions taken since the previous Assembly with respect to items on the work program of the Legal Committee, including the prioritization of items. The action to be taken by the Commission is set forth in paragraph 2 of the Executive Summary of the paper. Paragraph 2 of the working paper describes activities and support functions carried out by the Legal Affairs and External Relations Bureau. Particular mention has to be made of the conclusion of the new understanding between the Government of Quebec and ICAO, whose implementation has just been ratified by the National Assembly in Quebec last week. The Legal Affairs and External Relations Bureau continues to be heavily involved in various activities requiring its expert advice, assistance and support functions in addressing a wide range of the organization's activities, including the settlement of disputes before the Council, governance issues such as the ethics framework, as well as resource mobilization efforts pursued through the Committee on Cooperation with External Parties. Paragraphs 3 and 4 of the working paper describe the evolution of the work program of the Legal Committee since the last Assembly. The work program, as approved by the 30, 39th session of the Assembly, can be found in paragraph 3.2 of the paper. Paragraphs 411 to 4183 provide you with substantive information on how the individual items on the work program have progressed, primarily on account of the consideration of these items at the occasion of the 37th session of the Legal Committee, which occurred in September last year. I will now touch upon each substantive item in the order of priority as they stood at the time of the Legal Committee. On the topic of remotely piloted aircraft, a paper was presented to the 37th session to the Legal Committee detailing states' responses to a 2016 questionnaire concerning national legislation and relevant international legal issues related to remotely piloted aircraft systems, RPAS. The committee concluded that legal aspects of RPAS operations merited continued consideration and established working group to address international legal aspects of unmanned pilotless aircraft operations and the integration into civil aviation. The working group 
will discuss in such issues relating to unmanned aircraft operations and in coordination with the Air Navigation Bureau identify items for consideration by the legal committee and or possible solutions for legal issues within the framework of the organization's ongoing work. Working group meetings will be scheduled to coincide with meetings of the ARPAS panel so as to promote alignment and synergy with the organization's ongoing technical and legal work. The commencement of work of this group is, however, at this stage on hold due to some budgetary constraints faced by ICAO. The Secretariat is available to provide additional information, if so desired, by the Commission. Regarding the item consideration of guidance on conflicts of interest, the Secretariat has developed a compilation of pertinent ICAO provisions covering the aspects of aviation safety, security and accident investigation. Said compilation is available now in permanent form in all ICAO working languages. In relation to the item acts or offences of concern to the international aviation community and not covered by existing air law instruments, a draft manual updating circular 288 and a report with the recommendations of the task force on legal aspects of unruly passengers were presented to the legal committee. The committee agreed with the recommendations that the guidance material be published as a manual and that the repository of states criminal legislation on unruly and disruptive passengers, passenger offenses be established as well for the Secretariat to conduct a survey as to what administrative sanctions states have established to deal with such passengers. Following Council approval in November 2018, the manual on the legal aspects of unruly and disruptive passengers, document 10117, has now been published. Work on the remaining recommendations will be taken up during the coming triennium. A separate working paper is being presented to the, to the Commission proposing amendments to Resolution A3911 to reflect the completion of the task force work and the publication of doc document 10117. Paragraph 4.14 of the working paper addresses the item of CNS ATM systems, including GNSS. In relation to the item determination of the status of an aircraft civil state, you will note that it is no longer on the work program as the committee had considered that it was adequately covered by the 1993 Secretariat study, which took um, account of this item. Paragraphs 416 to 4166 illustrate the various efforts exerted by ICAO, particularly through issuance of state letters and holding of seminars, so as to further promote the ratification of air law instruments. We want to take this opportunity again to thank our partners in these endeavors for their support. An excellent opportunity for ratification was facilitated by the inaugural treaty event, which concluded today. This event provided an opportunity for states to deposit instruments of ratification for, for treaties to which ICAO is depository, or to consult lab on matters related to treaty ratification. We also want to acknowledge the joining by Tuvalu and the Commonwealth of Dominica as new member states of ICAO, bringing the total to 193 states. 
We also wish to advise that ACAO, in its capacity of depository of the Montreal Convention of 1999, conducted the third review of the limits of liability. This aspect is not reflected in the working paper because it has been the subject of a separate state letter. But we want to take this opportunity from the podium to announce that the limits will be adjusted upwards by a factor of 13.9%. The revised limits will become effective for all state parties to the instrument on 28 December 2019. A separate state letter to this effect will be issued shortly. As regards the item related to safety aspects of economic liberalization and Article 83 bis, you will find pertinent information in paragraphs 417 to 4173. Um, there is a slight editorial change. Um, please note that in, in the English version, in paragraph 4171, the word in the third line from the bottom, the word proposed should read instead adopted. The item implementation of Article 21 of the Chicago Convention is addressed in paragraphs 418 to 4.18.3. Particular mention is made of the work of the task force and its endorsement of a model certificate of deregistration to be included in Annex 9 to the Chicago Convention. The Legal Committee approved the inclusion of two additional items into the work program, and the Commission is invited in this respect to refer to Appendix A of the working paper. One item relates to the review of the ICAO rules for the settlement of disputes. The other item pertains to the topic of cyber threats against civil aviation, in particular whether existing air law instruments provide an adequate legal framework for responding to these threats. Other topics of legal interest are being presented in Appendix B of the working paper. The work program, including the priority of items as established by the 37th session of the Legal Committee, was last considered by the Council during its 215th and 217th session. You will find the relevant information in paragraph 4.3 of the working paper. 4.3, this paragraph also sets out the status and the priority of the items as established by the Council, including the titles of the items. As mentioned at the beginning of my intervention, the main task for the Commission will be to consider the program of future work in the legal field by establishing the work program of the Legal Committee, including the priority of items. This concludes my presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chakov, for eloquently presenting the paper. Uh, as I indicated earlier that after the presentation of the all working papers, uh, we, are, we will have the further discussion on those papers. And of course, our feedback comments of the future works of the legal committee, including the prioritization uh, that need to be done and the possible budget implication, I believe it should be discussed as well, uh, are very welcome. Um, now, uh, we are going to discuss uh, the next working paper, working paper 101, on Article 12 of the Chicago Convention, communication mechanism and guidelines to support its implementation prepared by Brazil and the United States. Therefore, now I wish to invite the author of the working paper to present it. Brazil or United States? Yeah, Brazil, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and good afternoon to all the members of the Legal Commission. Article 12 of the Chicago Convention requires the states to ensure that persons operating aircraft of, of their nationality abroad comply with the operating rules of the, of the host state. 
Nonetheless, the implementation of Article 12, while fundamental for ensuring flight safety, is not always effective. One of the reasons is the lack of an efficient and timely communication mechanisms between aviation authorities, which may contribute to cases not being brought. Some violations may be overlooked, with a negative impact on aviation safety. Brazil and the United States acknowledge that promoting aviation safety worldwide requires cooperation and agile co communication among aviation authorities. Therefore, we understand that to enhance safety and promote greater adherence to the rules of the air, ICAO should establish a legal and technical working group. This working group shall, if approved by this assembly, evaluate the challenges concerning proper and timely communication of violations and propose mechanisms and recommendations to address these challenges. Therefore, bear in mind that aviation safety is a shared goal of the whole aviation community and a primi primary IK objective, Brazil and the United States ask the support of this assembly to request the Council to create a legal and technical working group within the Legal Committee to study mechanisms to support implementation of Article 12. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Brazil. Uh, I recognize that the delegation of the United States wish to add some elaboration, I believe. The U.S., you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just wanted to highlight a few points. Of course, uh, we're totally in line with Brazil's points, but uh, for the group here, just want to drive a, a few points home. As you all know, the uh, Article 12 of the Chicago Convention requires states to ensure that air carriers and other persons operating aircraft of their nationality abroad comply with the operating rules of the host state. The working paper states that the, protect, the promotion of aviation safety worldwide requires cooperation and unimpeded and agile communication among states, particularly their aviation authorities, regarding alleged violations of operating rules. Therefore, the U.S. and Brazil request that the Council create a legal and technical working group within the Legal Committee to assess and endeavor to improve upon the process for notification and communications between states. This working group will result in best practices that will enhance global aviation safety. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, United States, for the presentation. Um, I think we will certainly uh, later on discuss uh, the recommendation of establishing a legal and technical working group within the legal committee to study the mechanism to support the implementation of Article 12 of the Chicago Convention. Um, now, I wish to invite IATA to present work program 293 on the progress with regard to the promotion of the Convention of the Unification of Certain Rules for International Carriage by Air or Montreal Convention 1999. Eata, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and good afternoon to everybody. The Montreal Convention 1999, or MC99, established a modern, fair, and effective liability regime governing international carriage by air. The International Air Transport Association, IATA, strongly supports MC99, and we have been advocating tirelessly for its ratification. Working Paper 293 outlines the benefits that MC99 brings, including better protection for passengers, faster and more efficient shipments for those businesses that rely on air cargo, and greater certainty for airlines. The working paper also notes that there are currently 136 parties to MC99. It lists the 14 additional states that have become parties to MC99 since the 39th Assembly in 2016, and this includes several major aviation markets. 14 additional states may not sound like a large number, but the proportion of passenger traffic covered by MC99 has risen from 86% three years ago to 98% today. An additional 390 million passengers annually 
now benefit from additional protections that MC99 brings. Over $600 billion annually in bilateral trade is now open to use electronic documents of carriage, e-airway bills, on trade lanes between states that are parties to MC99. Despite this good progress, there are still 58 states that have still to ratify MC99. However, with almost all international traffic covered by MC99, IATA has ended proactive efforts to promote it, focusing its efforts to support ICAO in promoting the ratification of other air law instruments. Since the benefits of MC99 can only be fully realised by universal ratification, Working Paper 293 respectfully asked the Assembly to request ICAO to provide the necessary support to enable all remaining states that have yet to do so to ratify MC99 at the earliest possible opportunity. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you for uh, the presentation. Uh, I believe that it has been recommended that the, the <coughs> Assembly note the significant progress of the number of the state parties of the Montreal Convention. Um, and the IQ is also requested to provide necessary support to enable all remaining member states to ratify uh, MCC 1999. Although I don't expect very much debate on this issue, uh, we will further uh, have a deliberation on this matter later on after our concentration of the information papers. As I mentioned earlier that now in our table, there are two information papers uh, prepared by Korea and Indonesia. And as I suggested that um, there is, because we don't have adequate, uh, adequate time, um, if there is no objection, uh, this meeting just take note of the papers. Um, uh, distinguished uh, delegates, um, I, I think it's, it's the time for us to have a, a deliberation. Uh, I should thank you once again to all the speakers for presenting all the papers. And, uh, and now I will invite delegation who is to take the floor for giving his command or feedback. The floor is open and now I see uh, Chris, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. T President. Good afternoon to all. Uh, I would like to support the working paper 101 presented uh, by United States and Brazil. Uh, as it can serve as a basis to further promote safety and timely communication but it might require some further refinement. In this regard, it should be ensured that the proposal will cover the full scope of Article 12, including the applicable rules of the Chicago Convention over the High Seas. Furthermore, all the relevant reporting has to be based and developed on the just culture concept. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chris. Now I see on my screen is uh, Italy. Good evening, Mr. Chair and distinguished members of Legal Commission, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, Italy, thanks for the flow, and would make um, a support on working paper 78 presented by ICAO. Italy expresses strong appreciation for the very useful and complex work carried out by the Legal Affairs and External Relations Bureau, as well as the various task forces and working groups active in the legal field. We would make a special mention for the working group established to undertake the review of the ICAO rules for the settlement of differences, the new item added at the request of the Council to the work programme of the Legal Committee during the last session in September 2018. Italy strongly shares the need emphasized by the Council to promote synergy among the organisation technical and legal work to ensure that legal committee, legal bureau, legal task forces and working groups work in concert with other relevant ICAO groups to guarantee a continuous dialogue and balanced progress of the technical and legal approaches and point of views. And we strongly support the prioritization given in the legal committee work program 
to the international legal aspects of unmanned aircraft operations and integration into civil aviation, a topic close to all of us. Welcomes the introduction of new items addressing cyber threat against civil aviation and strongly appreciates the further consideration that the legal committee would give to the study of commercial space flights and suborbital civil flights. Finally, we take the opportunity to recall the importance of the legal activity within ICAO and the participation of civil aviation professionals in its related groups with special regards to the legal committee wishing for the enhancing of its activity and meetings. Thanks a lot for the floor. Thank you, Italy. Now I wish to give the floor to ICCIEIA. You have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and good afternoon, everyone. We appreciate the opportunity to comment on working paper 78. ICCAIA, representing aerospace manufacturing industries globally, notes that the study of international legal issues relating to GNSS, item eight in the work program for the legal committee has been a continuing item. We further note that assembly resolution A3219, the charter on the rights and obligations of states relating to GNSS, specifies the obligations of states in respect to the provision and use of GNSS services. Additionally, there is sufficient performance criteria and ICAO provisions in Annex 10 to support safe and efficient use of GNSS. So it is the position of ICCA that the performance criteria and policies currently in place are adequate to support the provision of services. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Israel, you have the floor. Thank you, uh, Chairman. Uh, Israel uh, would also like to support working paper uh, number 101 regarding the enforcement of, uh, uh, of bilateral um, or maybe mechanism to better enforce uh, violations of uh, in accordance with Article 12 to the Chicago Convention. Uh, we wanted to say that uh, because enforcement measures are rather domestic by nature, so uh, and different measures may be applied by different uh, states, then we would uh, imagine that uh, this uh, working group will, should concentrate on the way of uh, collaboration and cooperation between the state of registry and the state of uh, violation, state of occurrence, as it may be referred. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Israel. Now I win. I want to give the floor to Germany. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, we would also like to comment working paper 101. Um, we are uh, thankful to uh, Brazil and the United States for uh, proposing the establishment of a working group. And we are sure that an improved efficiency of the cooperation in regard to offenses in aviation is an important tool to improve safety. Um, we would like to, to second what has been mentioned by the Greek delegation, that that working group um, should also look into the inclusion of the just culture concept into its, its work on this important subject. Thank you. Thank you, Germany. Now, Czech, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and good afternoon to, to everybody. Uh, I would like to comment working paper number 78. Uh, I would like to thank uh, the Council and the Secretariat for, for this working paper and for the information provided. We support the conclusions of this working paper and uh, we support the, the work program of the legal committee as it is. So we have no, no comment regarding uh, the number of priorities. Uh, uh, but uh, I would like uh, to have one comment regarding the implementation of, of, this, of this work program. Uh, it was, as it was already mentioned in the presentation of the Secretariat, uh, the legal committee, 37th legal committee, discussed uh, many important issues and one of the major conclusions was uh, broad agreement to establish a working group 
dedicated working group uh, to address uh, internet, international legal issues uh, regarding unmanned aircraft operations and their integrations, integration into civil aviation. Uh, this this uh, decision was made uh, approximately one one year ago, and uh, the group still has not been activated. I fully understand there are some budgetary and, and uh, financial concerns, as, as mentioned. Mentioned uh, in any way, uh, I would like to ask Secretariat if uh, it could clarify when and uh, how this this group is uh, about to be activated and perhaps uh, to, to encourage active approach in this respect, taking into account that uh, it was this decision was made under agenda item with the highest priority on work program of the legal committee. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jack. Now I want to give the floor to Spain. Thank you very much, sir, and congratulations on your appointment. Our delegation would like to support all three working papers presented, 78, 101, and 293, in general terms. Now, with respect to our work program, which has been looked at by the Council, of course, and reviewed, under item 8, we're referring to GNSS, and it's my understanding and I do understand the comments made by ICCAIA. Nevertheless, when it comes to the future of aviation, it's obviously going to be based on at least satellite systems, or if not, you know, global systems. And I'm referring here to not only do we have navigation systems, but we have communication systems, and we have oversight and monitoring systems, right? And so. It's our view that it could be timely for the legal commission to take a look at this very closely and follow it closely, not only when it comes to navigation systems, but all the other global systems that go beyond country borders. Now, with respect to document 101, once again, if I take a look at what previous speakers mentioned. This is a very reasonable proposal from US and Brazil, more than reasonable as a matter of fact, and it's based on Article 12 of the Chicago Convention. In this way, we would eliminate problems that we've faced in the past. And so for that reason, our delegation supports the proposal put forward by Brazil and the US. And we agree with Greece and Germany. And Finally, with respect to working paper 293 from IATA, we support that paper and we support all those countries who have recently ratified. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Spind. Uh, Cameroon, you have the floor. Merci, Monsieur le Président. I thank you, sir. Cameroon supports working paper 101 and in fact we support this working paper to the extent that the concerns raised are shared by the Cameroon if civil aviation authority and we've been exchanging information with other authorities when it came to the security convention uh, meetings that we had in Cameroon we're talking about personnel training and so we agree with the idea of creating a working group on pulling out the best practices when it comes to implementing Article 12 of the Convention and to draw up a process to notify and communicate amongst air navigation and civil aviation authorities. And finally, we also support Working Paper 78. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Cameroon. Argentina. Muchas gracias. Thank you very much, sir. 
and congratulations to you and the vice chair for being appointed. First of all, I'd like to refer to document 78, paragraph 4.3 in particular with respect to the work program. And as other delegations have mentioned, what we're interested in point number eight, we believe that it would be appropriate for the committee to take into account the request to broaden this whole issue to include other systems that provide support to air navigation. Now, I'm not going to repeat comments made by previous speakers, including those made by the ICAO rep. Now, with respect to document working paper 101, we support the creation of this group. And finally, we also support working paper 293 put forward by IATA. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Argentine. Portugal, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. On, on behalf of Portugal, I would like to express my support to the working paper 78. Uh, Portugal recognized ICAO K role on developing of their legal framework on the civil aviation activities. This working paper reflects the development in the relevant decisions since the last assembly. In a view of promoting the safety matters, Portugal supports all actions according to the Chicago Convention and the outcomes from the legal groups. Thank you. Thank you, Portugal. United Kingdom, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. On working paper 101, the United Kingdom supports the request to create a legal and technical working group within the legal committee. It, we also uh, support the uh, views expressed by Greece, Germany and Spain. It will be important in this group to focus on proportionate and streamlined processes to ensure effective communication between member states. Thank you. Thank you, United Kingdom. Uh, Switzerland, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I can be very brief. With regard to uh, Working Paper 78, we support the work program. With regard to 101, we would also uh, echo what has already been said by uh, Greece, uh, Germany, UK, Portugal and Spain, that the just culture has to be taken into consideration when dealing with this issue. And Working Paper 293, Viata, is also supported by Switzerland. Thank you. Thank you, Switzerland. China, you have the floor. Uh, so first, I would like to congrat congratulate on the president and the vice president. Chinese delegation pay attention to uh, working paper 78. We support 78, and we appreciate the work done by the legal committee and we hope such kind of work can be further pushed forward. We also hope the legal committee can uh, push forward uh, the legal issues on the remote controlled uh, pilot issues, particularly the legal issues in this uh, navigation. Uh, so it has put forward a lot of uh, challenges, particularly for some basic legal requirements we hope the legal committee can push forward the APAS um, to further solve this problem. When conditions ripe to have a working uh, group on this uh, APAS, and also we support working paper 101. Just a we uh, support the representatives uh, of uh, Germany, Greece, and Spain, and we need to have a working, com a working group. We also support working paper 293. This convention, 1999, has played a very important role in guaranteeing global safety and uh, passenger safety more and more countries rectified this uh, Montreal Convention, which can further promote the orderly development. In conclusion, 
We also, the information paper 375 proposed by Korea. This legal committee, which was held every three years in Asia Pacific region, has played a very important role. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, now I want to call Denmark. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Denmark supports working paper 293 presented by IATA. I just want to remark that uh, as, as the author uh, says, only seven, uh, only, uh, although 98% of global air traffic is covered by the Montreal Convention of 1999, only 70% of the member states of ICAO have ratified the convention. And uh, we want to encourage ICAO to continue to support the remaining states in order that we can have a, a global regime in this, in this matter. Thank you. Thank you. The next speaker will be Finland. Thank you, Chair. Um, like so many delegations before me, I would like first to give my support to working paper 78 by the, by the uh, legal bureau. Um, I, I, I join uh, the concern with um, uh, voiced by the Czech Republic uh, relating to the fact that we have problems in, in, in the financial constraints have, uh, have uh, uh, slowed down the work on our pass and we find that we hope that we will find innovative means of, of, of overcoming these problems and, and taking the issue further. Um, when it comes to working paper 78, like so many uh, delegations before me, I would like to support as well this paper. Finland is warmly, warmly supporting each uh, every project that will uh, add to the cooperation and communication between states uh, like Greece, uh, Germany and others. However, we wish to, to uh, wish that the technical and operational working group looking at that matter should also look at the interface uh, with uh, just culture when uh, developing its work. Thank you. Thank you, Finland. Now I have a Gambia. Um, thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Gambia wish to support working paper 78 and thank um, IKO Legal Bureau for the working paper. Um, Gambia supports the work program as um, highlighted on the work program and Gambia wants to align itself with the explanation given by Spain on the, um, item 8 on GNSS. I know they will say GNSS have been on the, the, work, in, the work program for a long time but in view of the argu argument um, given by Spain I believe we see the need why we should still maintain it on the work program of um, the legal committee. Thank you. Thank you, Gambia. Uh, I want to give the floor to South Africa. Thank you, Chair. South Africa supports uh, working paper 78 and wish to address the issue on the item considering consideration with regard to the CNS and ATM and wish to suggest that uh, for the legal commission to be able to move forward with this regard, uh, we should maybe look into a collaborative consultation with the technical commission so that more information is provided in terms of what is it that's required for the legal commission to provide a, a legal framework. And further South Africa, wish to support working paper 101 uh, also there, we wish to suggest that before we proceed maybe with the working group, uh, we should look at a mechanism where maybe state letters can be uh, looked into so that there's more information with regard to what is a way forward in addressing the identified consistencies as our domestic laws might be affected in that regard. Thank you, South Africa. Now I want to give the floor to Sweden. Thank you, Chair, for giving me, giving me the floor. And good afternoon, everybody. Uh, Sweden would like to thank uh, the Council for presenting Working Paper 78. 
for the assembly, and we would like to express the, express the appreciation for the important work that has been undertaken by the legal committee. Sweden therefore support uh, the proposed work programme and the task that has been included in the programme, and we support working paper 78. Thank you. Thank you, Sweden. Now I would like to call the uh, Netherlands. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Good afternoon. Um, I would like to say that the Netherlands supports the core of uh, Working Paper 101 and its aims to improve aviation safety. However, in taking this further, close attention should be paid to aspects of just culture. Thank you. Thank you, the Netherlands. Now I recognize Lebanon. Thank you, Mr. Chairperson. Lebanon also supports uh, the uh, uh, work uh, program of the organization in the legal field as set forth in WP 78. We also salute the efforts uh, made uh, by the Legal Affairs Bureau as well as uh, the priorities as set out in this document. Uh, we also support the creation of the working group as detailed uh, in WP 101. We support uh, uh, this uh, uh, document prepared by the United States and Brazil. We stress the need to uh, work uh, uh, to extend uh, uh, the uh, adherence uh, to the Montreal Convention the need for all member states of ICAO to do that uh, as set forth uh, uh, in the working paper presented by Yata. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Lebanon. Now I wish to give the floor to Andorra. To what? Uh, I, I suppose it's France. Okay. Well, uh, thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. First of all, the French delegation wishes to... Uh, pardon, very excuse Apologies. Mr. Chairman, thank you for giving me the floor. The French delegation would like to congratulate you and I congratulate the two vice presidents who have... Uh, vice chairs who have been elected by the committee. I would like to make four brief comments. The French delegation supports working paper 293, which was presented by IATA. The delegation also supports working paper 78, presented by the Secretariat, and the work program of the legal committee and the order of priority set out uh, for the items. We note in particular that the order of priority of the legal committee's work program has been uh, updated considerably, taking into consideration the changes in the international legal and political developments, uh, including the uh, last meeting that we had and the meeting now. Now, our third point. We share the concerns of a certain number of delegations who have already spoken regarding the uh, RPAS systems. We were among the delegations who s strongly supported the creation of a working group on this issue. We also strongly supported this uh, topic being number one, uh, giving, getting number one priority on the work program of the legal committee. As since this was uh, highlighted by the Secretariat, uh, we are aware of the budgetary and financial uh, constraints that the that LEB is subjected to, and so of course they have very valid reasons for why uh, very little has been done in implementing this decision to create a working group on RPAS. 
Further, we support a working group on Article 12 in accordance with the paper presented by Brazil and the United States, Working Paper 101. We are in favor of the creation of this working group. We'd like to specify uh, that we approve the uh, points as set out by a certain delegations, including uh, the Netherlands, Great Britain, Spain, Germany, and Finland. I hope I didn't forget anyone. Uh, regarding the uh, just culture and its necessity. Uh, uh, regarding the last two comments that I made, there's a common denominator. We notice that given that it is difficult for LEB to quickly establish a working group for financial reasons and budgetary reasons, we would simply like to recall that there are possibilities to begin this work uh, uh, using working groups created by the Secretariat, and these would work in one language only. And this would um, mean that there would be uh, fewer expenses related to translation and interpretation. We have in the hall, some colleagues who have worked in such working groups already. They very often are come before the creation of a true working group that operates with the full language services as appropriate. So we simply wanted to draw the Commission's attention to the fact that it could be useful for some of the working groups to go through this temporary phase, this interim stage of a task force that wouldn't require the corresponding expenses, and uh, this could enable things to happen faster. Thank you. Thank you, Franz. Uh, before I give the floor to Amen, uh, I, I recognize that uh, Mr. Juan would like to say something to respond to uh, the last speaker. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And thank you for the questions raised. Can the machine expert low down the voice? Thank you. Uh, the question especially raised by Chechia, seconded by Finland and France about the issue of unmanned aircraft, or may, to be neutral, unwoman aircraft. We, we call it pilot this aircraft, try to be gender neutral according to the policy of this organization. Yes, you are right, there are some financial constraints However, we still have some budget. It's not we totally out of control. Again, to use the word of my mother tongue is, I don't know how to translate properly, is I hope the Chinese... We need to spend them, we need to make the best buck out of the dollars. Uh, so we want to reserve the resources at the time when it's really needed. At this moment, there are a lot of technical discussion within the framework of IQ annexes, that is standards and recommended practices. So we have designated legal officers participating in the work of the APAS in those technical groups interfacing with them. And briefly reporting to you is they still try to resolve the issues through the standards and recommended practices and probably through certain additional guidelines. To date, to my knowledge, unless you have other angles of information, there is still no appeal or calling for international treaty work 
to address the issue of APAS. And this is the reason why we have not yet triggered this work of the working group. That's, Frank has a, proposed a very good suggestion which we are ready to adopt. We are in the process of doing this. Perhaps we can set up a small group of task force or secretarial group first, together with the APAS technical group to start to trigger the study on this. And when the thing come up that legal issues need to be addressed in the form of the working group of the legal committee, then we come back to that and to use our limited resources to, to support that work. So that would be my proposal from the secretary point of view to have a relatively small group in the form of task force to be interfaced with the technical expert groups if to see whether this is agreeable by the this commission. Uh, this is something relating to APAS. Regarding Article 12, many delegations have taken the floor to support this idea. Secretariat also wants to support the idea. But again, this is an interface between technical bodies and legal bodies. And in fact, if you recall, one of the major theme of this assembly is innovation. What is the innovation? Mostly is brought by the advanced scientific and technical knowledge and products. So I dare to say in this forum, especially for younger generation of lawyers, we do need combination of knowledge on the technical science and the legal expertise. I may be too old for myself to adapt myself to that. Uh, but the future for yours is to combine the technical expertise and legal expertise. And this issue of Article 12 also involve both expertise in the sense that we need, as US and also Brazil jointly propose, we need the technical and the legal experts in this. So what I suggest from secretary point of view, again, also to establish a kind of task force to be interfaced with our technical bureaus in IQ to forward this work. So that will be my intervention at this moment. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, uh, Mr. Huang. Uh, now I want to call uh, Oman. You have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chairperson. At the outset, uh, I should like to thank. Uh, I should like to uh, thank uh, the uh, Commission for having endorsed uh, uh, us as uh, second vice uh, uh, chairman. Uh, I should also uh, like to thank uh, uh, all uh, officials uh, in the Legal uh, uh, and uh, External Affairs Bureau for their efforts uh, in this regard. I should also like to stress that my delegation supports the working paper uh, 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 presented uh, by LEB uh, uh, concerning the working program uh, of uh, the Commission encompassing all the uh, issues uh, that ought to be considered uh, uh, in the field of civil age aviation in general. I would also uh, like uh, to refer to the paper presented by the U.S. and Brazil concerning communication and cooperation and support it. Uh, and finally, uh, the remarks by Dr. Huang, uh, which uh, uh, we believe uh, uh, are the basis of uh, our legal work. I agree with him, and I also agree uh, uh, with him in the idea of setting up uh, uh, task forces uh, uh, to interface uh, uh, with uh, uh, technical uh, uh, bodies. Uh, uh, thank you, sir. Thank you, Oman. Now I would like to call uh, Qatar. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Congratulations on your election, and congratulations also to the two vice chairmen. 
Um, Qatar supports the adoption of the work pro, uh, program as revised, and we very much appreciate the work that the Secretariat has put into the explanation of the various items uh, and, their, and their importance. Uh, we also support the recommendations in um, <coughs> working paper uh, 101 submitted by uh, <coughs> Brazil and the United States. We believe that there can be genuine problems in the subtitle of the paper, communication mechanisms and guidelines to support its implementation. Um, I could not um, hope to improve on uh, Dr. Huang's uh, explanation of the benefits of an interdisciplinary uh, body to work on this issue. Um, and so I'll leave it at that. We support the recommendations. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Kothar. Now I would like to give the floor to uh, Singapore. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, we've listened with great interest to all the um, interventions of the states and find that many of them are very useful and um, um, worthy of our st strong con consideration. On working paper 78, uh, we join in thanking the Legal Bureau um, and all the working groups and, um, for the great work that's been done um, on the work program. Uh, regarding the RPAS panel, we also share the concerns about the budgetary constraints and know that it's really quite difficult to overcome them. And we agree that um, other ways uh, can be used. We should not be restrained from uh, doing some work on the topic. And uh, the proposal uh, by Dr. Huang that uh, task force, uh, which had already been suggested by some delegations, uh, should certainly be taken up because that will be a good way to overcome the uh, financial constraints. Also, the idea that we should um, have an interface with the technical working groups is excellent. Our work should complement and support the rest of the work of the organization in the technical safety and uh, where relevant also the security and other areas. So we strongly support um, that proposal. On working paper uh, 101 by Brazil and the US, um, we fully support uh, the creation of a legal and technical uh, working group. Uh, and here again, um, would make the point that, uh, again, because of the financial and budgetary constraints, that a uh, task force would be um, an appropriate way to approach this work. Um, we think that the proposal for an effective process for the timely and efficient notification and communication of alleged violations and common procedures and best practices regarding the preparation of investigations and enforcement cases, including appropriate evidence and documentation would certainly be very, very useful. We think that these would have the potential to not only enable the taking of necessary enforcement actions, but also assist in preventing and or resolving disputes between states over non-enforcement or otherwise of actual or or, um, well, uh, suspected infringements of regulations and or the rules of the air by air carriers and other persons operating aircraft abroad. And we would certainly be interested to support any work that's done uh, by a group uh, on this area. On working paper 293, we certainly support um, what IATA has put forth. We see indeed the benefits of Montreal Convention 1999. Um, not only on the question of compensation for victims, but also for the um, electronic airway bill and the effort to um, promote e-freight. We believe that the um, Montreal Convention 99 has a very useful mechanism for increasing the uh, limits so that the um, convention continues to be relevant uh, in the years to come. And we thank the Legal Bureau for the work of revising the limits uh, which will come into effect later this year, as already explained by um, Ari Jacob. So um, thank you very much uh, for all the working papers from the various uh, states and the legal and the council and the legal bureau. Thank you very much. Thank you, Singapore. On my list, I see uh, Nicaragua. You have the floor. Muy buenas tardes. Good afternoon, everyone. Very briefly. 
We support Working Paper 101 presented by Brazil and the United States as well as Working Paper 78. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Nicaragua. Now I, I see uh, United States. You have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And uh, I thank everyone on behalf of Brazil and the United States for their support of Working Paper 101. In regard to uh, the work program of the Legal Committee, or the Legal Commission, which is before us here, that the work program of the Legal Committee, I um, support the work program with a few caveats and comments. With regard to item one, the RPAS um, group, we support the establishment of the small group with uh, regard to the statements made by LEB and uh, France as well. As everyone knows, our pass is definitely the future. It's uh, taking off quicker than we can regulate it, and there are a number of legal issues to be resolved. So it's very important work that we need to uh, take a look at, and the United States would uh, definitely participate in this study group, however it's convened. With, with regard to item number four, we just uh, want to query perhaps the legal bureau on one issue, and that's here again. You know, we took um, a decision at the during the legal commu committee, which the U.S. supported in adding this to the work program, and then the ICAO council. Um, appeared to wrap cybersecurity into an existing technical study group. And it wasn't clear to me if uh, the legal issues surrounding cybersecurity will be addressed by that uh, technical study group as um, enhanced with some of the legal experts in this room, perhaps. Um, so perhaps the Legal Bureau can uh, address that point um, afterwards. Otherwise, I suggest uh, we do need to have the legal issues studied by a group of legal ec experts in one way or another. With regard to item six, the promotion of ratification of international air law instruments, of course, the United States is a big supporter of the majority of the international law instruments. However, as you've heard before for the last few years, we have a continued objection to Montreal Protocol 2014. We'll address the, the specifics of that as we get to the next agenda item, but I, I do want to hi highlight that um, we do have that objection to the support of Montreal Protocol 2014. And finally, with regard to item number eight, um, the GNSS, of course, I had the pleasure of being part of the GNSS legal and technical panel that was established in the uh, 90s. And we did a lot of work and we, um, you know, supported the removal of this item from the work program at one point. However, at the last legal committee, this item, the, the language of the item was changed to look at not the past, but at the future. And of course, commercial space is uh, advancing as well. So we did not, we did not um, want to take this item off in regard to looking at the future legal issues. Not that there's any specific issues currently, but as time goes on, as the technical body perhaps raises some issues that we will then need to look at. So those are my comments on the work program. And then of course, um, the United States fully supports for all the reasons my learned colleague from Singapore explained, working paper 293. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, United States for the comment. And I see no I see no more speakers in my list. Say, so if you allow me that, uh, I will, uh, I will uh, address uh, one wor uh, the working papers one by one. Let's now, I, I'm going to touch upon the... Canada. No. Canada wasn't here. Oh, excuse me. 
Austria. I see on my screen Austria. This is uh, to, to take the floor. Thanks a lot. I had some technical problems, so now I'm here. Uh, I will be very brief. I would like to comment on working paper 78. And uh, almost all is said. I would also share the views of several delegations like France, like uh, Finland, Czech Republic, US, and um, I think also Singapore on the air pass topic. And uh, the sooner activation of uh, the work, uh, maybe in a study group, which is in our point a, a good idea. So thanks. Thanks for your attention. Thank you, Austria. And now I have a Canada. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I uh, just wanted to say that Canada supports the working paper 293 as presented by IATA and is supportive of any and all efforts that IK undertakes to help ensure that ratification of the Montreal Convention 1999 by, remain, uh, by the remaining member states. Thank you. Thank you, Canada. Uh, I think there is no more speakers on my list, so if you allow me, um, I think there are some feedback and comment uh, has been presented to all the working papers. And uh, with respect to uh, working paper 78, uh, I believe that there have some comment and the comment has been duly noted. And uh, it is my impression that we have a shared views on, on the work program of the legal committee. But before I go further, I, I think I wish to invite uh, the secretary, uh, Mr. Huang, maybe they have they wish to take the floor to provide a further information for the commission consideration. You have the floor, Mr. Huang. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, further to some question raised by certain delegation, including the question raised by the United States uh, delegation. I would like to mention briefly that uh, we have a very good cooperation, again, between legal experts and the cyber experts in this respect. Uh, in the day group of considering the cyber terrorism or cyber attacks or cyber resilience, de depending on what angle you are looking at it, uh, they are both equipped with uh, technical and uh, legal experts. Uh, I would ask, uh, before I go further, I would like to introduce, uh, we also have Sorana Pop uh, today. Sorana, please stand up to, to show you yourself too. And Sorana Pop is uh, uh, working as a consultant in the aviation security policy section. And Mr. Andrew Opolo also is uh, doing the work in this respect. So we have again another combination of technical experts and, and legal experts, which I would emphasize uh, for the future generation. But I would finish this first, then I, I would ask Andrew to explain in more details. Concerning the APAS, the consensus seemed to retain this as a high priority in the program. Review of the IQ rules for the settlement of differences. The working group is also going on this subject. Considering the proposal by Brazil and US supported by others, I make a proposal to this commission to see whether we can include as a number three of the item of the work program of the legal committee, processes and procedures for states to fulfill their obligations under Article 12 of the Chicago Convention. I read it again. Processes and procedures for states to fulfill their obligations under Article 12 of the Chicago Convention. This is number three. Number four, there was some statement concerning whether the acts of offenses shall be considered in the context of the cyber threats against the civil aviation. One of the possible suggestions is to combine, if you turn to the page seven of working paper 78, it is possible to combine item four and five 
of them, but it's up to this commission to decide whether it's feasible or not. Four and five can be said as acts or offenses of concerns to the international aviation community and not covered by existing air law instruments, that is the existing tax of number five, and then comma, we can put including cyber threats. That is one possibility. Another possibility is to, to retain four and five as it is. The rest, probably, unless the commission thinks otherwise, will be keep, kept as the, this, kind, this order. So before I return the floor to Mr. Chairman, I would like to see whether Andrew has something to add about Cyber Group. Thank you. Can the, can the technician give Andrew Apollo the, the floor? Yes. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. I have uh, plenty of additional information to share, but in light of the hour, I will try to keep it uh, quite brief. Uh, a lot has been going on uh, in the realm of cybersecurity, including the legal domain uh, since the last uh, meeting of the legal committee. Uh, the organizational arrangements uh, presently in place at ICAO to deal with the issue of cybersecurity acknowledge that a multidisciplinary approach is required to deal with, with the issue. And uh, as a testimony to this, uh, uh, Director has just introduced uh, Ms. Sorana, whom we are working with as focal points in the Legal Affairs Bureau and the Aviation Security uh, section respectively. So uh, Assembly Resolution A3919 did call for addressing cyber threats through a cross-cutting horizontal and functional approach involving the collective expertise of stakeholders from various disciplines and uh, that's the stance that the organization is taking. So uh, pursuant to this uh, resolution the organization established in uh, August 2017 the Secretariat Study Group on uh, Cybersecurity, uh, which has uh, several related working groups on aerodromes, uh, airworthiness, uh, and future air navigation systems. But they also established a, a research subgroup on legal aspects. Uh, whose main focus is on uh, legal concerns uh, uh, under this topic. And I would assure uh, delegates here that the correct focus is being applied uh, towards addressing uh, the legal framework. So <clears throat> the, 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 the the subgroup is supported by the legal bureau and part of the mandate of that subgroup is to review the adequacy of existing international legal framework and that task of the subgroup is closely aligned to the work program item uh, of the legal committee. Uh, the plan right now is that should the group identify aspects concerning existing international air law instruments, these are to be referred to the legal committee for uh, for, for further analysis. So I would say, uh, just to conclude very quickly, Mr. Chairman, uh, uh, that we are working closely with the aviation security and uh, air navigation sections in a multidisciplinary manner to ensure the delivery of uh, various outcomes, including the review of the adequacy of international instruments uh, this work will be peer-reviewed by an expanded uh, subgroup uh, uh, which ensures proper geographical representation and uh, undertaking this aspect of the work through the available channels of the uh, research subgroup on uh, legal aspects is considered to be the most practical and efficient approach available to us at this time in order to expedite the work 
within limited budget resources and avoid duplication. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Andrew, for your uh, clarification. Thank you. Um, I, I think uh, we can, I just want to seek your comment on, on the, the last proposal made by uh, Mr. Huang about the work program of the, of the legal committee. And if you allow me, I wish to read it again. Uh, essentially, uh, the work program of the legal committee will be First uh, is an international legal aspect of unmanned or pilotless aircraft operation and integration into civil aviation. It's number one. And number two will be a review of the IQ rules for the settlement of differences. And number three, uh, I think this is about uh, the proposal to have a task force with, uh, with, which will interface with uh, uh, technical bodies and it will be added to the work programs with a new uh, uh, title, and it will be processes and procedures for states to fulfill their obligation under Article 12 of the Chicago Convention. And number four, it is essentially is a combination between the um, uh, ballot number of, of four and three and four, yeah? three and four in the, in the working paper, and it will be read as follows. Acts or offenses of concern of the international aviation community and not covered by existing air law instrument, including cyber threat. Uh, this is the new language, yeah? And then uh, number five, I think uh, as proposed, that it will keep as it stand uh, consideration of guidance of the conflict of interest. Six, promotion of the ratification and international air law instrument. Seven, implementation of Article 21 of the Chicago Convention. And last is, lastly is a study of international legal issues related, relating to global navigation satellite system. I just want to seek your comment. And yes, I see Australia and Spain and France. Now I give the floor to Australia. Uh, thank you, Chairman, and just briefly, congratulations on your appointment and your Vice Chairman as well. Um, two concerns about these, and there are probably more matters for the proponents themselves, but firstly, with respect to the new Item 3, um, a task force to interface with technical groups, as far as um, Article 12 matters are concerned, I'm not, I'm not entirely sure what those other technical groups would be since it has to do with enforcement and legal rules and that sort of thing. So if there are groups existing that deal with specific aspects of that, that could work. But I understood the paper to be uh, more broadly concerned with in, in the enforcement of, of, of rules of the air as they apply internationally and elsewhere. But they, as I said, that might be a more matter for the proponents. So secondly, while I'm, not, I'm attracted to the combination or the conjunction of four and five, my concern there is that um, item five refers to um, items that are not covered at, not covered full stop by existing instruments, whereas item four talks about the adequacy of coverage. So perhaps you could um, modify five in such a way as to say acts or offenses of concern to the international aviation community that may not be adequately covered by existing air law instruments, including cybersecurity. So that way you avoid the, the presumption that something is or isn't covered when in fact that may not be certain. Thank you. Thank you, Australia. Uh, be before I go to uh, give the floor to Spain and France, I believe the author or the proponent of uh, uh, the, uh, the proposal to have a technical or a task force on Article 12 would like to give a comment or, or the response what uh, our colleague from Australia just said. The U.S. or the Brazil would like to? Yes, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you, Australia, for your comment. Yes, indeed, we'll have a lot of legal issues to discuss uh, on this working group, but we will certainly need some uh, technical support because uh, what we, we aim for is having new technical ideas on how to communicate in a more effective way between innovation authorities. And by having this more agile communication, we will... Uh, give the authorities uh, uh, the, the, the opportunity to act upon and to, ha to, to have a better enforcement regarding the, the violations and the alleged violations. So I do agree that it is a technical and legal uh, work that, that should be combined. 
Thank you, Brazil, for your response. But I see uh, the U.S. delegation, perhaps, would you would like to give uh, to, to add something before I give the floor to Spain and France. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just to uh, add on to what my good friend from Brazil just mentioned, I think in the effort to um, come to a solution to maybe the financial problem that was, was raised by both France and LEB with regard to ways forward, um, it is a legal and technical issue. And as I said before, this, uh, this body has worked in a number of different ways, not always under the legal committee, but with legal experts attached to a technical group that perhaps if um, constituted under the A and B or, or some other uh, form will help us to save money for, for all of our states. Thank you. Thank you, U.S., uh, for the clarification. Now, I wish to invite Spain. Yeah. Thank you very much, sir. Well. I didn't really want to intervene with respect to this issue. I think we should do that in a joint group with respect to the legal issues. It's not necessary really to for, go any further with this, just identify the problem and the group itself will have technical and legal experts to deal with the issue. So we don't need to go any further on that in my view. Now I did want to refer to point eight with respect to international legal issues. I think we have to be in agreement on terminology. So we don't want to only want to talk about GNSS, only navigation systems, but also communication systems. I think we should change the wording. It's not GNSS. This, th we should say something like those systems, global systems, which go beyond simple navigation issues. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Spain. Now I would like to give the floor to France. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Thank you, Chairperson. I would like to make two comments and ask a question. The first uh, comment has to do with the priority order and the intentions of the colleagues who have not been following, uh, rather for, for the colleagues who haven't been following our work for a long time, I would like to let them know. Uh, that uh, the priority that was set out by the Commission is not in order of the importance of the questions. So we're not establishing a hierarch hierarchy of the objective importance of the various issues. The priority as defined is rather aimed to uh, highlight the topics on which the work can be done quickly. And it is uh, logical that some of the topics are higher in priority uh, uh, as soon as we know that it will be possible to move them forward quickly they are moved up and then other um, issues do not lend themselves to quick work and therefore they have a lower priority but this is not uh, about the priority of the commitment for the work and it's not uh, a, a, about an objective hierarchy. So my second comment is to support the proposal to combine items four and five of the current work program by combining the acts or offenses uh, of concern to the international aviation community aviation community and cybercrime. And as uh, Mr. Wong proposed, we are in favor of these two becoming one. Uh, we understand the proposal and we, uh, by our colleague from Australia, we fully support it. Uh, it removes the ambiguity uh, between the wording of current four and current five. And so, it would be uh, good to have a draft that brings them together as quickly as possible, and we do think this is quite relevant. And so finally, in order to clarify, I would like you to recall 
the conflicts of interest, they are currently in point three. And then there was a new priority order uh, proposed by the director of LEB and that you, chairperson, uh, uh, supported. And so where will we find the conflicts of interest? It would be good for the commission uh, to read what the final order is that you propose before we take our final decision. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Franz, for your uh, intervention. Now I, I wish to invite Argentine. Thank you very much, sir. First of all, I'll, I'll, I'll wait until I have your attention, sir. All right, so my delegation would like to support comments made by Spain with regards to point eight on our current work program. In 4.3, there's a recommendation from the ICAO Council to broaden the scope of point eight. That's the recommendation of the Council, and that's what we see here in 4.3, and it was supported by a number of delegations which have taken the floor earlier, including my delegation. And now we would like to thank you to take into account that point of view expressed by a number of delegations, including the delegation from Spain, so that point eight does take into account the more broad wording being recommended by the Council, including other technologies and communication technologies and so on. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Argentine. Now I would like to invite uh, Vinland and then Singapore. Thank you, Chair. I tried to be brief. Uh, I just wanted to give my support to the, for to the proposal by Australia on how to combine uh, points four and five. Uh, um, I think that the, 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 it was very well also explained why we need to do that. In addition, I would like to support the proposal of France that please could you reread then uh, the order of pri priority as proposed uh, to be adopted. Thank you. Thank you. Now, uh, Singapore. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, we join in supporting the uh, proposal by the Director of the Legal Bureau for the combination of items uh, four and five, and uh, we are agreeable that the uh, item should be um, along the lines of what's in current item five. Um, with regards to the question, Australia's proposal, uh, it is attractive. Um, just one concern about, at the end of the day, what is the delivery in terms of this item uh, by the legal committee? Um, and I think that if we keep the wording and not covered by existing air law instruments, it wouldn't um, uh, oust uh, the, the review of whether or not uh, they are covered by uh, existing, existing air law instruments. It just makes it clearer that the outcome is to deal with uh, these matters when they are not covered by the air law instruments. And of course, I, I uh, reiterate that I would support the inclusion of the words including cyber threats, because that's how we combine the two items four and five. Thank you. Um, I don't see m more speakers on my list. Uh, if I, I just want to, uh, it is my impression that um, we have a general agreement on, on the proposal, on the work of a program legal committee, of course, with some modification. And uh, I also agree that about the uh, views made by our colleague from France that uh, about the hierarchy, uh, sorry, about the order, about the priority, it doesn't reflect about uh, the hierarchy of the importance of the matter. It's only uh, the, uh, the, the number of the order is only reflect uh, uh, the practical approach on how to deal with those matter. This is our understanding. So we should, uh, we should treat all the matters equally in the, uh, in the, in the same, in the same food. And then, uh, 
there are two points, if I, if I may share with you, that we, we, I need your help on how we, we, uh, we, we, we can go further on, uh, on the, uh, the proposal to combine uh, uh, number four and number five. Uh, on the extra offenses of concern of the international aviation community. And there is a new proposal from our colleague from Australia uh, that we, we should uh, rephrase a little bit by adding uh, a may not adequately covered by the existing air law instruments, including cyber threat. But of course, there is a, a very practical question presented by our colleague uh, 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 from Singapore about what the the uh, the, the, deliver, the deliverable uh, delivery for 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 uh, for this particular agenda item. And the last one is about the idea to broaden the scope of uh, uh, number eight on the study of international legal issues relate, relating to the GNSS. Is there any one to uh, to make a comment or feedback? If there is no further comment, I can conclude that we have an agreement that uh, uh, the work program of the legal committee, and if you allow me, I reread re -read again about uh, uh, the order. First, is about the international legal aspect of unmanned or a pilotless aircraft operation and integration into civil aviation. And number two, and a review of the IQ rules for the settlement of differences. Number three, processes and procedures for states to fulfill their obligation under Article 12 of the Chicago Convention. Number four, acts or offenses of concern to the international aviation community and not, uh, may not be covered adequately by existing air law instruments, including cyber threats. And then number five is consideration of guidance of conflict in interest. Number six is um, promotion of the ratification of international law instrument. Number seven, implementation of Article 21 of the Chicago Convention and study of international legal issues relating to the global, uh, global, global communication and navigation satellite system. This is my understanding. Please correct me if I'm wrong uh, for the, uh, uh, artic, uh, for, for the uh, program of work number eight. Or Spain, you would like to uh, to read it again. Your proposal, your precise language, you would like to add for number eight. I see Spain. Gracias, señor presidente. Okay, thank you, sir. Well, okay, let me give it a try. Refer to global satellite systems. That's good. Or global. Satellite, uh, satellite systems for navigation and communications. There's a couple of possibilities. You could just say global satellite systems and that would work as well. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Spin, for, for your proposal. I think I prefer the simplest one. Uh, so we, we will have a study of international legal issues relating to the global satellite system. Is there any comment? I see Singapore and Namibia. Singapore, you have the floor. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. I note uh, there was a contribution that said that the broadening of the scope of item eight is at the request of the council. And I, don't, I think that the proposal by Spain is indeed very useful. But um, at the end of the day, the work of the legal committee is subject to the consideration and approval of the council. And since this is a request from the council that has been uh, brought to us, uh, may I suggest that if it's possible to take a look at what was the formulation that was provided by council in its deliberations so that we can accurately scope uh, this item. Um, I think it doesn't affect the priority that's uh, uh, including it in, in the uh, work program. Uh, but a proper uh, scoping would be very useful so that we were aligned with what is the request from the council. Would that be in order? And perhaps um, Dr. Huang may be able to help us in this respect. Thank you very much. 
thank you, Singapore. Before I give the floor to Dr. Huang, uh, I wish to invite uh, Argentine. Yes, thank you very much, sir. Chapeau of paragraph 4.3. There you have verbatim what the council said. It is already written there. It says, and I read in Spanish, El Consejo invitó a la the council invited the legal commission to broaden the scope to include other systems and services that provide international air navigation services. We were re repeatedly, maybe it's a matter of uh, translation, we are re repeatedly referring to the language which is already there, Mr. President. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Uh, Dr. Huang, you would like to say something. Thank you, Mr. President, Chairman. I have nothing to add to the distinguished delegate of Argentina. Thank you. Thank you, Argentina. And I see Namibia. Mr. Chairman, uh, thank you for your indulgence, Mr. Chairman. With a view to the finalization of this list, um, and this being the legal committee, I was just wondering, uh, the description uh, in item number one, um, should we proceed um, to actually make a reference there to pilotless aircraft? Um, we know that uh, the, the unmanned, uh, well, the RPAs, they are in fact being piloted. Um, the development has reached that stage. So should we not advisedly leave out the word rather and look at an alternative word for unmanned? Thank you, Mr. Chair. They are certainly not the pilot list, the pilot list aircraft. Thank you. I think uh, Secretary would like to say something on this particular subject. Thank you. You have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, under, just to clarify, under Article 8 of the Chicago Convention, um, the reference in Article 8 where it, per, it entitled pilotless aircraft states no aircraft capable of being flown without a pilot shall be flown without a pilot over the territory of a contracting state without special authorization by that state and in accordance with the terms of such authorization. That provision, the, the use of the term pilotless aircraft in the title of the provision and the description of what a pilotless aircraft means incorporates remotely piloted aircraft. A remotely piloted aircraft, pilotless for this, for purposes of Article 8, means without a pilot in command on board the aircraft. That's what, for purposes of Article 8, pilotless aircraft means. So a pilotless aircraft encompasses remotely piloted, autonomous, all unmanned aircraft fall under Article 8 as pilotless aircraft. Thank you for uh, the, uh, the clarification. I think it's pretty clear. Um, if you allow me, I think, uh, I think we have an agreement on, on, of, uh, uh, on the work program of the legal committee. And uh, with respect to the item number eight, uh, I think uh, our colleague from Argentina has made very clear that uh, the, um, uh, the, the mandate is to, to broaden, or the request of the council to broaden of the scope is very clear. And then I think uh, we, we, can, we can go with the proposal uh, or our colleague from Spain uh, that the item will be read as a study of international legal issues relating to the global satellite system. I think it is, uh, uh, it is compatible with uh, the request of the council. Is there any comment? I see none, so I think uh, we, 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 uh, we can adopt at this meeting uh, the work program of the legal committee. And then um, on, the working, uh, on working paper 101 on Article 12, I think we have already agreement. And uh, uh, lastly, on the working group on um, working paper on 293 by AITA, I think there is also uh, broad support 
from the Commission that we, we can endorse that, uh, that the Assembly will note the significant progress of the number of the state parties of the MCC. And uh, uh, IQ is also requested to provide necessary support uh, to enable all remaining member states to ratify Montreal Convention 1999. So uh, I think uh, we, I see Greece and Singapore. Greece, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I would like to add uh, in uh, point eight of the working program, uh, I agree with the proposal made by Spain, global satellite systems, but it's better to be added supporting international air navigation services. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Chris, now uh, I, I want to give the floor to Singapore. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Greece has exactly made the point that I was going to make about um, qualifying the satellite systems with that which supports the in and navigation uh, services. Um, the only other point I would raise is that if you look at the Council's uh, request, it's not only just the system but also services. So if we want to be faithful to what the Council has requested, then we need to also add end services after systems. Thank you. Thank you, Singapore. <clears throat> there is a, a, a proposal to revise a little bit, uh, item number eight. So it will be read as follows. Study of international legal issues relating to global satellite system and services supporting international navigation services. Is there any comment? I see none. I think it is acceptable. So um, I think it's... We are running off time. Uh, it, if I propose that we, we should adjourn the, this meeting and then we will meet again. And uh, for the technical, uh, so I see uh, the US delegation on my screen. You have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And I uh, totally support adjourning the meeting and declaring victory at this point. Um, I will say, You've all made me late for a party, so if you would all join me and explain to my superiors at the Delegates Lounge on the third floor, you're all welcome to our uh, reception. And that includes the interpreters as well, since we kept you late. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, U.S., for your announcement. Now I give the floor to Mr. Huang. You have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, just to note, tomorrow, at two o'clock, we are not meeting here. We are lucky to have a smaller room. That will be in the ground floor, conference room three. Conference room three on the ground floor. When you just enter, you cross the bridge and it should be on your left hand on the bridge. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Huang, for the good news, because it will help me so much, because it make myself easier to look to look at the speaker. You know, in this room, I'm, I had I have difficulty to look at you. Uh, thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. I think uh, we uh, we can adjourn the meeting and see you next meeting.